People keep saying Tadashi's not really gone. As long as we remember him. Hello, I am Baymax. Tadashi programmed me to heal the sick and injured. Hello, everybody. I actually have two movies to talk about this weekend. Um, not sure how I found the time to see two of them, but I managed to pull it off. And I'm going to split them up into two separate videos. For this one, I'm just going to talk about Big Hero 6, which was a whole lot of fun. Uh, this is kind of sort of a Marvel film, but not really. It's based on a Marvel property, one that I have not heard of. I am not even familiar with it, but it was released under the Disney banner. And... It is so very good. So much fun with this one. Uh, the story takes place in the futuristic city of San Francisco. I'm not really sure how a city like that would exist. What, what exactly happens in the future that causes San Francisco and Tokyo to merge? Does, do all these earthquakes finally cause California to break off from the U.S. mainland and it just kind of drifts across the Pacific Ocean over to Japan and they say, what the hell, we'll claim it. I don't know, but th there's got to be a story behind here somewhere. But anyway, the focus of the story is 14-year-old Hiro Hamada, who has already graduated high school at his tender young age, but isn't really sure what he wants to do with his life, and spends a good deal of his time competing in these illegal underground robot fighting competitions. Because it's the future, and that's apparently what they do. They moved on from dogfighting and cockfighting, and now they just have the robots fight, like an illegal street version of Robot Wars or something. Um, but anyway, his brother wants him to enroll at his university, but Hiro is reluctant because he doesn't want to go to nerd school. Psh, why would I want to do that? That sounds boring. But then his brother actually shows him what it's like and all the neat stuff they're doing there, and he realizes, oh my god, science is awesome. Where do I sign up? Unfortunately, shortly after he signs up, there is a tragic accident at the school, which results in one of his inventions being stolen by some mysterious man in a kabuki mask, who is using his invention for nefarious purposes. And so Hiro recruits his fellow students, and also this medical robot that his brother built called Baymax, and basically turns them all into superheroes so they can go out and catch the bad guy. And that is the story in a nutshell. Uh, the characters in this movie are... A lot of fun, uh, especially uh, the robot, Baymax. He, he is really the star of the show here. He is uh, very lovable, somewhat clumsy, doesn't really know how to manage his massive size properly. It's like every time he's turned on, he has to cautiously move around and avoid running into things, constantly getting stuck in windows and doorways and whatnot. And yeah, he's... He is just so much fun to watch. And there is one particularly funny scene where, because apparently in the future, when robots run low on battery power, they become drunk. Yeah, for artificial intelligence, low battery is the same as booze, I guess. I, <laughs> I'm not sure how that works, but yeah, his, he, he starts stumbling, slurs his speech, he can't keep his eyes open. I don't know why a robot would need to worry about that, but whatever, it was funny, who cares? It's just, oh, that, that robot is so much fun, I want one. I think everyone who sees this movie will want a Baymax. <laughs> no kid should be without one. Um, even T.J. Miller's character, oddly enough, I did not have a problem with, which is weird because I did not like him at all in uh, Transformers Age of Extinction, and thank God I did not find him as annoying in this movie because, unlike Transformers Age of Extinction, he's in the entire movie, uh, but fortunately never wears out his welcome. Uh, now, the movie does have a lot of very funny moments, and for the most part, the jokes do hit, and hit very well. Um, it also has a few tear-jerking moments here and there, especially towards the end. Uh, I did hear a few sniffles in the theater. Uh, I'm not going to go into why. I'm just, just going to warn you, it, if you're the type that's susceptible to that sort of thing, you might want to bring some tissues. Just, just saying. Uh, also, one particularly scary moment towards the end that was pretty intense, especially for a movie that largely seems to be aimed at children, uh, did not think they were going to go that route. But... Uh, I mean, it's not like it goes into an area that's wholly inappropriate for children, but it, it is pretty intense. 
Uh, was not expecting that. Uh, the animation looks fantastic. Disney has really upped their game in recent years when it comes to their computer animated films. I don't think they're quite on Pixar's level yet. I doubt they ever really will be, because that's a pretty high bar to set. Uh, but they're holding their own. Def <coughs> mm -hmm. Excuse me. Could have sworn I went through puberty already. But yeah, they're... It looks fantastic, very bright, very colorful. Um, the, the characters all look fantastic. The backgrounds are very highly detailed and have a few Easter eggs in there that you might want to look for. Uh, action sequences are very fast-paced and exciting. The movie looks very good in 3D, uh, which really shouldn't be all that surprising at this point. Uh, for, you know, rendering a computer-animated movie in 3D, they pretty much have that down nowadays. Uh, oh, speaking of the 3D... This really doesn't have anything to do with the movie. I just thought it was kind of weird. So I, I get the 3D glasses, and I realize they are not the usual plain black 3D glasses that you normally get. And in fact, they seem to have some kind of weird design on the side. And I'm thinking, oh, are these some like special edition Big Hero 6 glasses? Actually, no, they're not. Get a look at this, if it will focus. I probably have to hold my hand up here so it's not trying to focus on my face. There we go. Okay, you see that? You see that little logo on there? That's a Transformers Age of Extinction logo. Yeah, somehow I end up with Transformers Age of Extinction glasses for Big Hero 6 several months after Transformers comes out. I, I guess that means they do recycle these. Um, that I, I just thought that was weird. Has nothing to do with the movie. Pardon the tangent, but yeah. Um, the voice actors, I thought, all did a very good job. Uh, uh, Scott Adsit, in particular, as Baymax, was fantastic. Um, there was one weird little thing with the voice acting that kind of bugs me, and that was uh, Genesis Rodriguez, who does the voice of Honey Lemon. Um, throughout the movie, she actually pronounces Hiro's name correctly, as Hiro, the, the actual Japanese pronunciation. Whereas... Everyone else in the movie, including his own family, oddly enough, pronounces it hero. They, they use the, uh, the bastardized white man pronunciation. And I, I really thought that was weird. I'm not sure why they decided to go that route, if he was even a conscious choice on the part of the director, or if Rodriguez just made that call herself and no one told her to stop. I, I don't know. It's... It doesn't really hurt the movie any... I just thought that was really weird. Now, what, one thing that this movie does have working against it is the plot is honestly pretty predictable. Um, I mean, when, when you find out that they have to go up against this masked man who stole Hero's invention, there's a very obvious candidate for who is behind that mask right off the bat. And they pretty much spell it out for you. This is who the masked man is. So, of course, you know... It's not going to be that guy. Because they're, because they're making it too obvious. So, of course, they're trying to swerve you. So, so you see the swerve coming a mile away. Um, now, now, to be fair, it was very interesting seeing how they got to the big reveal. E even though I knew the reveal was coming. So, I will give them that. But, yeah, it is, it is a bit predictable. Also, uh, when they describe why the bad guy went bad... It apparently had something to do with a science experiment gone wrong. And leading up to the end result of this experiment, of course, there's some guy sitting at one of the monitors who says, uh, something looks a bit off with one of our readings. Well, no, nah, you know what? It's a bit high, but it's still within acceptable bounds. I'm sure it's fine. Nothing will go wrong. Okay, y you're in this futuristic place with a bunch of nerds here. Has no one in this universe played Half-Life? You should have seen this coming. It's like, no, it's still within acceptable bounds. No problem. And suddenly aliens are coming out of the pl all over the place. Like, and I know it's way in the future, but sh surely Half-Life would have hit good old games at that point. I'm just... Someone should have seen this coming. Really should have. But, yeah. But apart from those minor details, it's... It is actually a pretty well-written movie and very entertaining. Um, also, because even though this is not a 
true Marvel Studios movie. It is still based on a Marvel property, and thus it does have a Stan Lee cameo. Albeit in animated form, but still, he's in there. And it does have a post credit sequence, which is awesome. So for the love of God, do not leave when the credits start rolling. Stay in your seat and wait for the end, because you will want to see that. I suppose I should mention the movie is preceded by a short, like most Disney animated movies nowadays. It's a short film called Feast, which is a disgustingly cute short about a, a very hungry dog. Um, th there's really not much I can say about it without spoiling it, because it's, you know, the thing's only about five minutes long, but it's, yeah, definitely do not get to the theater late because you will want to see that as well. It's, it's very good. And I guess that's about all I have to say about this movie, except if you haven't seen it, you need to do so right now. It is worth full price. It is worth a 3D surcharge. It is worth whatever. Just see it, please. It is awesome. So until next time, which will be in just a few minutes because I have a second movie to talk about, I am satisfied with my care. You gave me a heart attack. Clear. Stop, stop, stop. It's just an expression. What do you say, buddy? Whee! Okay, let's get you back in your luggage.